in the summer of 2008, I Was Kidnapped by Mr. Henner Hoffman, Director of Photography, ASC. He allowed me to participate in a wonderful adventure in a workshop for Latin American filmmakers. The workshop was to take place in Mexico City at the Centro de Capacitación Cinemográfica that is adjacent to the beautiful Churubusco Studios that date back to the very epicenter of the golden era of Latin filmmaking since the 30s. The young students came from all over the Spanish-speaking world, Spain, Mexico, Central, and South America, and they brought with them all their accents. Joaquin, one of Henner's operators, gave all the students wonderful tips and techniques on camera handling, focus point, and all those complicated idiosyncrasies of the Panavision camera. This student, one of the Latinas, is giving Henner a synopsis of the shot she's about to film. This being a seminar, the students actually created the assignments for themselves. This enabled them to push their very own envelopes in technique and, and various technical challenges. This young lady is telling Henner that she's decided she's going to shoot this handheld. She's not going to put the camera on a dolly or a tripod. And that's quite a challenge because the Panaflex camera uh, configured is about 65 pounds. Uh, and on top of that, she's going to shoot the scene by the light of candles. Each one of these candles in the set has to be lit one by one by one. This is the young lady uh, with the camera mounted on her shoulder, ready to shoot. You can see here the professionalism that was an exposure meter in, in uh, calculating this very challenging lighting setup. Oh, created a beautiful effect. This Picasso-like drawing racetrack, where you can see the little laser pointer tracing around, is a racetrack for sure, but the students are practicing the use of the Panaflex geared head, uh, and that's how they uh, refine their technique in using this very important camera support. The assignments that the students created for themselves were very varied. Here is one, uh, you can see this very warm graphic-like lighting, which is a wonderful, versatile palette that you can <coughs> use for an old advertising or a romantic scene. Zune is Basque, and he was one of our filmmakers as well. Then, just like a real movie set, we have motion picture location catering, Henner made sure that this was provided for so that the students would stay on site and we wouldn't have to waste time corralling them after lunch. But it turned out to be delicious. When demonstrating camera movements, Henner was very thorough about discussing, explaining that a camera movement has to be logical in the context of cinemagraphic language. Another technique that Henner was very, very good about using, um, very, very effective, was he would go run through a scene, actually do the camera movement here on the Fisher Dolly, 
and he would he would then enable the student to watch that scene as he was shooting it through a device we call a trans video or video feed and uh, in this way the student really got the concept and then the student uh, would of course have their opportunity to actually shoot it themselves This young cinematographer, another Latina, decided to use smoke to create a wonderful, mysterious ambience. Just one of the thousands and thousands of brushes that a cinematographer has to have in their kit to call themselves a director of photography. This is Malo, a young director of photography who's a wonderful resource for everyone. Okay. Henner has a fabulous, <laughs> fabulous handheld camera technique. You can see he prefers to hold the camera towards the front. Uh, he's holding on here to the map box. Uh, and uh, he, he just has a fluidity and a, a freedom when he's holding the camera that's marvelous to watch. You can also see the camera assistants having to do a ballet <laughs> to keep up. Zoon is now getting his chance to shoot the scene. And you can he see again the camera assistants having to do this little ballet <laughs> to keep up with Zoon and his rapid uh, camera movements. But again, this is part of the technique, part of the language. Uh, and is uh, the very reason, the freedom of movement is the very, very reason for uh, the handheld technique here. I was very impressed how the students would help each other. Uh, here one young lady is explaining to another the use of the exposure meter. This is going to be a rather complex lighting set and you can go on any television set, any motion picture set. For each scene, the decision as to what the correct f-stop is, is the signature of the director of photography it makes or breaks the scene. And here Henner is turning that decision over to the, the students. You know, let them argue a bit, let them gonna discuss it, bat, batter back and forth. They have to come up with that correct f-stop. And uh, you'll see on productions, everything stops until the director determines, director of photography determines that correct exposure. Henner again is demonstrating the dolly movement uh, and the, the uh, framing composition, and then he's going to have the student shoot it. We were able to provide a reflect media system for the students. This is a chroma key system. Uh, it's comprised of a retroreflective material and a green or blue LED that goes around the lens, which is the light source for the chroma key surface. Uh, very, very fast system to set up. We're shooting here with the Panavision uh, Genesis HD camera run through a Miranda uh, down converter. Um, this actress here is uh, actually touching, pushing on the fabric itself, and you can see the image dimensional stability is phenomenal. Um, even though the fabric is moving, the, this digitized image of the artwork uh, is absolutely stable. It's a very bulletproof system. The actress here moves really, really close to the camera, so there's enough chrominance from the green LED that we're actually keying through her. 
and of course now she's moving into the proper position for the take at this point. Now part of the fun, one of these students grabbed a piece of chromat, small piece, and Harry Potter, in the Harry Potter movie, uh, chromat was his cloak of invisibility. So here she's recreating this on her own as uh, una capa de invisibilidad de Harry. A lot of fun, uh, very, very easy system to use and rather bulletproof. The actress who is from the drama department, uh, she was really interacting with the crowd and started to put on this uh, mime performance that was just adorable. One of the students asked, Marcos, will this work with smoke? So the young lady uh, offered, volunteered to smoke a cigarette so we could, we could see and demonstrate that, yes, Reflect Media can beautifully capture particulate ambience, the smoke. Uh, and you can see she's uh, demonstrating it rather well here. No, no Henry commandeered a classroom so that we could talk filtration, use of filtration, uh, with the students. Uh, here they're actually handling the filters, and uh, Henner uh, very diplomatically and very uh, humorously discussed the <coughs> advantage of Tiffin being able to offer green or clear glass. <laughs> and uh, he put it in Spanish, he put it uh, very well. He said, well, you know, with Tiffin, you get the green at no extra charge. It was hilarious. But you can see the kids are all over filtration and really needs to be taught more in curriculum. Uh, they're, they're starving for it. The next morning, the students actually got up really, really early before class and were doing all their own experiments with the filters. So they're, they're very enthusiastic. They want to experiment. <laughs> Yet another wonderful opportunity Henner was able to bring to the workshop was the participation by Mr. Damian Alcaraz a wonderful award-winning Mexican film actor. The set, you can see, is very primitive, very uh, stark. We commandeered these old props from the drama department. Damien, despite the basicness of the set, his very presence of being in character the moment he stepped onto the scene brought a real sense of place. You really felt the place. And that, again, uh, was very, very important for the students to, to experience. Henner made a very important point in that you must have to round out the curriculum and the experience of the students. You must bring an actor of Damien's stature to participate. Because it's only that way that you can see a professional actor interface with the camera almost as a member of the audience. And you can't talk about that. You have to film that. You have to uh, experience it. And it was a marvelous enrichment uh, for the students. The process we're watching is called blocking. And basically, it's a very straightforward walking the, the actor uh, through the physical dimension of the set, standing up, sitting down, walking across the floor. Henner is figuring out where he wants the camera to be positioned. You'll see the students putting down little green pieces of tape uh, on the floor. Those become the camera marks. Some people call them POVs, a point of view. Although Henner says he's not a good director, he's a wonderful director. And he worked with Damien very intimately to bring out the subtle 
facial expressions that only a director of photography of Henner stature uh, is going to be sensitive to. Here's the start of the scene. You can see the long shadows of the actor uh, and all this lighting is created. It's not natural. It's all created for the mood and the effect of the scene. Thank you. 